Welcome to Gaia's Love, a podcast of brief messages to help humanity bridge the gap to the new earth. My name is Vivian Gerard. It is my delight to be a scribe for consciousness today, sharing the wisdom that flows through from source. Here we go. episode 367. It is Friday here in Cincinnati. It is beautiful. We started the day at 43 degrees and I think by late afternoon it's going to be 79. Yes, it would be November in Cincinnati. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. Is climate change a thing? I don't know. It doesn't seem like it. it seems like a pretty average November day. It's so pretty. The sun is shining and it just feels, it feels very peaceful outside. The construction across the road that I described a few podcasts back in the New Roads episode, it's proceeding very quickly and they're starting to become more visible across the valley. So I was at my kitchen window this morning making my smoothie and I could see trucks across the way. I'm like, oh, (laughs) There's neighbors, they're starting to become visible. It's so funny. More updates on that, I'm sure, over the next few months. We'll see how quickly their house comes into view. Okay, it is about 1045 as I start this podcast episode. I have been monitoring the presidential elections pretty closely this morning because it sounds like some decision is imminent, whether that is one that will be contested or lawyers jumping in. I don't know. I don't think any of us know, but it does sound like a decision is pretty close. And so when I turned off all of my electronics to be able to focus just on this message that wants to come through, I'm still in a place of unknown. And the, right, like we've all been holding our breath. Maybe, maybe we can start by just breathing together for a moment. By the time you listen to this, it probably will be decided and announced and whatever the next steps are will already be underway. So can we take a breath? Can, can we relax into the knowing that We live in this incredible co-creative world where voices do count, votes do matter, opinions are collaborated upon. Whether we like the outcome or not, every voice is counted and tallied that wants to participate. And I, I find that incredible, incredible in the way that it is visible in the way that we can witness it as it's happening, to see the... I'm just diving right in here. (laughs) I have other things to talk about too, but (laughs) this is what many of us have spent most of this week pondering and discussing and watching through the eyes of the media, which granted can be very slanted, (laughs) but still provides information. And I I do feel like the focus, I'm going to be all over the place because the thoughts are coming through so quickly. I do feel like the focus has been on actual scientific tallied counted results without projections and uh, personal um, inferences made from the media standpoint. I feel like even as... um, statements have come from the president and from others involved in both parties and you know from those sources that no sources <laughs> all of that other stuff i feel like even in that sorting through it all the media has tried to be focused on actual countable tallies and for that i am so grateful that we live in a country where the process is legitimate It is a legitimate flow of energy that goes directly from the voices, the hands, the votes, the the 
mailing ballots or the actual in-person ballots or early voting ballots, whatever form individuals have chosen, each one is tallied. And it's a legitimate voice heard in a democratic, I don't even know if that's the right word, a co-creative community that has agreed upon this rule that every voice matters, every voice is heard. And when a major decision is necessary for the energy to shift within our collective agreement, we all get a chance to participate. And each one's chance to participate is valued. Isn't that remarkable? I find it, I find it magnificent and humbling and like what vision our original founding fathers had and mothers because the mothers were there with the fathers. (laughs) What incredible vision they had to create that as the base, as the absolute foundation of life here in this country. That if you register your voice, your voice will be heard. Whether you choose to register or not is completely (laughs) up to you or whatever all the other legal things are that are happening. But when you choose, when you say, I want my voice to be heard, it will be heard. And watching that this week, how the counts have been shifting you know the the news reports they'll start the day with like 58,000 votes uh difference and then it's 55,000 votes difference and then the votes every individual you can see the numbers changing as each one's voice is registered i find that to be incredible and so validating of this process we've all agreed to so Big exhale out. We, <laughs> we have been loudly <laughs> sending our voices messages out into the collective airwaves. And apparently it's taken a few days for all of that to settle into something that can be accepted by all of us. And I believe the time between really from mailing ballots first being sent in and then the early voting happening and then the actual election day and then all the tallying after that we've had quite a lengthy open space of energy for all of those voices to be gathered from what i have been watching in the news more people significantly more people have participated in this process And they're saying perhaps it's because there were more options. There was more time. There was a greater capacity and more pathways in which people could bring their voice into this dialogue. And of course, that's going to take a little bit longer (laughs) for us to feel that energy and then bring it into something that has a definite outcome. And I, I feel like this time of this week, allowing everyone the space to start to process how we feel about this many more people voting and how we feel about the reactions of each of the candidates and of the parties and of all of those participating. You know, there's a lot of movement within this container that we are calling the voting process in the United States in 2020. And so it's okay if it's taken a little bit longer. I mean, we're a pretty impatient society. (laughs) So we're like, hurry up, hurry up and count every single vote, even though there's more than ever before. And there's more ways in which it's coming in. Hurry up already. (laughs) What's taking you so long? (laughs) But when we breathe into it, I feel such deep satisfaction that more people want to be heard more people find that their opinion is valuable to express. That is a win. That is a huge expansion in the, the health of our co-creative agreement. More people are saying, my voice does count. I do have something to say that matters. I do want my vote counted. Even those who are protesting say, stop the count. They still want their vote counted. (laughs) So that doesn't quite work. 
right? We don't get to say, don't count their vote, but count my vote. Like, all votes are counted. Isn't that, doesn't that make you happy? It makes me so happy that we have this process that allows all of those voices who choose to participate to be heard. And for that, my head is bowed and my heart is open. What, what a profound moment in time we are participating in right now. History books <laughs> will mark this one as that election. <laughs> That's probably what it will be called. Remember that election in 2020 <laughs> where everything just came up and had to be cleared and then massive changes evolved from that portal of time. That's what they will say in the future about this moment. And, and we're here. We're in it. We get to be one of those that participates in that process. Like, damn, it's good. It's so good. There was a great, there have been so many great memes and photos and little images that have just brought such humor to this time. But there was one that I saw right at the beginning that was so funny to me. I don't know who it was in the picture, but it was this this actor, and he's standing behind. He may have been in the office. I don't know why, but I don't know. He was standing behind some curtains. It looked like he was in a hotel room, and he's got a bag of chips in his hand, and he's just staring out the window, and he's eating the bag of chips. <laughs> and the caption said, our friends in Canada watching the election process in the United States waiting to see what happens. <laughs> I thought that was the image. <laughs> the whole world. Oh, I don't know. Is that true? The whole world is very busy with their own lives. So it feels very egotistical for us to assume <laughs> that the whole world is watching what is happening in America. But I, I do believe that many outside of the United States are watching what's happening in the United States to see how does a co-creative agreement work when it feels so polarized, when the conversations have been so volatile, can a community actually flow through change in whatever way that is, change in administration or change, I don't even know, change. <laughs> Whether we keep the same president or get a new president, it's still going to be changed. Something will be different in the next round. <laughs> because, yeah, whatever. We won't get into all that. Here's, here's what I feel like those outside of America are, are curious about. Can a community that has agreed to everyone being able to participate in the process, what we've named as a democracy, but... I think even that word is shifting. I think even that is perhaps not the right vibration of what we are moving towards in our co-creative agreement here in the United States of America. Can this community that has agreed to a process where everyone's voice is heard move through significant change in a peaceful manner, in a respectful manner, in a way that allows that transition of power to flow with respect and with ease and and what does that look like what's actually going to happen so i do believe there are lots of people with bags of chips <laughs> that are watching us like a reality tv show going whoa whoa what is that character going to do next <laughs> what's going to happen here <laughs> i mean many of us in the united states are also doing that but we have a vested interest in it the others are more curious like ah, what's going to happen and and what's that going to mean for us? What, what does that open up in the global community of humanity as these individuals here in this group move through this time of change? The reason I say that is four years ago when we, as a collective community, voted in this character president, this role that he is playing, because it was a collective agreement you here's <laughs> I'm trying to speak it all out and it's coming through so fast <laughs> okay we'll just focus on four years ago four years ago we all 
as a collective community agreed upon this pathway or it wouldn't have happened. Whether your vote was for one party or another doesn't matter. The collective agreement was we're moving in this direction because that's the direction that happened. And what rippled out from there was this immense women's movement around the world. Around the world, it activated this huge ripple in consciousness of, whoa, wait a second. Women's voices need to be heard. Speak up. Me too. And then all of this healing started to happen around the ways in which women had been marginalized and that we had allowed that as speaking as a female, how we had allowed that within our journeys and how to come back into our own strength and, and uh, sovereignty and respect for ourselves. That rippled out from our agreement in the United States to shift into this next leader. And then it's just been one movement after another and the ripples have just been moving around the globe collectively over and over. And then we arrive at the pandemic at the beginning of this year that stopped the world. Not, I don't believe, originating in the United States, but it was a collective global stop. So wherever it originated doesn't matter because we all agreed to have this pause or it wouldn't have happened. So we have this pandemic pause and from it rises up the Black Lives Matter movement. I mean, who would have known that this would be the thing that would activate it? And then how directly this pandemic influenced the process of our election, the ways in which people chose to participate in voting based on fear of masks, not masks, the guidance from the president to not wear them and vote in person and not mail it in, and the guidance from Biden to mail it in and not do it in person, and how all of that is playing out in the way that the votes are being tallied. It's, it's absolutely so interconnected. Every single choice that we are all making is leading us directly into the next co-creative choice. It's it's just breathtaking right now and mind blowing <laughs> and also exhilarating because we are we are moving faster as a humanity we are someone said this in one of the newscasts i believe they said things are happening now in a week that would have taken a year a couple of years ago to get done i i feel like the ability for collaboration, for decision making, for shifts in pathways, it's so rapid because we're we're not holding back. <laughs> we're just moving forward and flowing right into it and then suddenly here's this thing that's happening. Yeah. Which is why it's so important to take some pauses, to take these moments and sit in what is unfolding and marvel at it. Look backwards and find some of the threads and look through it through your lens. This is all, all that I'm offering is my lens, how I see the connections. You may see it completely different. You may find 50 other threads that I haven't named here that, that weave together in a way that humbles you to see. It's, it's so magnificent to feel how every individual contributes to the collective movement of life here on earth. Every individual matters and counts and what we contribute to this collective vibration, it's felt, it's registered, it's essential. And so perhaps what I feel is perhaps this time is not so much about throwing all of our emotions and judgments at the collective process, but perhaps turning inward again, again and again and again, as I keep saying in this podcast, looking inward again and yet again <laughs> to really understand for ourselves, to own for ourselves, 
What are we each contributing to this collective energy? What is it that we're adding to the soup? Are we, are we proud of that? Are we happy with that? Are we satisfied with what we're contributing? Are there ways in which we individually could improve our contribution or make it more valuable, make it more profound? Each, each vote counts, each voice counts, each con- contribution counts. And so as we, <laughs> I've talked about this before, it's like watching Naked and Afraid. As we sit back in our armchairs or our couches <laughs> and witness the process of this election play out on the media in front of us, also turn inward, turn the lens and look at yourself. We're in this time of such incredible change happening. And we're wrapping up, we're very close to wrapping up this crazy year of 2020, this incredibly powerful year of 2020, as we move towards the end of the year and we start redirecting our focus, our attention on 2021. Things are changing. We will have a a ceremony in January where the president will be named, whatever happens at this point, it appears to be that we will be voting, we will be ceremonial, (laughs) we will be witnessing a ceremony (laughs) where Joe Biden will be sworn in as president. What does that mean? What changes are going to come? Are we going to sit back and watch whatever keeps playing out on the TVs in front of us? Or is this a an activation time within us to go, okay, all right, my voice was heard. Whether my voice was heard for one party or another doesn't matter. My voice was added to the collective soup. And now the collective soup is moving in this direction. More people than ever have said, this is my vote. This is the way we're going to go. What are we going to do about it? How do I choose to participate and engage in this collective vibration? You don't have to wait until 2021 to start contributing in a more powerful, meaningful way, in a more aligned way with yourself. Just start. Perhaps, perhaps it begins with judgment. <laughs> I swear, some of my episodes must just sound like I'm on repeat because I feel like I've talked about judgment quite a bit lately. Probably because judgment is coming up so much in my own journey <laughs> that I'm having to work on it for myself. My husband and I had a great conversation last night and earlier this week where I was clearly voicing my judgment about something that was happening uh, politically and, and how I felt this. And it was very projected out. <laughs> and it was so beautiful because my husband, who is so wise, last night says to me, I've been thinking about what we were talking about, and I think perhaps that was a little judgmental of us to say. (laughs) But he included himself in it so I could receive it. And I was like, well, no, no, it wasn't. It was not judgmental. It's truth. (laughs) It's truth. (laughs) And he said, yes, and. And I was like, you're right. Okay, well, maybe it's truth for most of the people, (laughs) but not for all of the people. And so I could pull back my judgment. Like, Instead of using those blanket statements of everyone, everyone who did this must believe this. I said, well, maybe the majority of people (laughs) would believe this. And then today I was on my run and I flipped the story. I flipped the story. I thought, what if the other person's perspective was looking at me? Would they have that same judgment? It was... Well, I don't, I don't want to even bring politics in in that way. It was a very personal opinion about uh, pro-life, pro-choice. And so I was flipping the story. Like, what would those on the other side say towards one who voted the way I did? <laughs> what I heard was like, all oh, those people must believe this. And it was exactly the judgment I had projected out. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm doing what I'm accusing them of doing. Okay, reassess. Reassess. Come back into truth. What is my truth? Right? My truth is I believe in love. I believe in 
I believe in people having the right to be able to make their own choices and to express those choices. And so not judging someone else's choice is an important part of that. My head's still kind of (laughs) making its way around this shift in awareness. (laughs) But how, how, I keep using the word humbling, how humbling to see that I was doing that thing that I was accusing others of doing. I don't want to be that. I don't want to do that. I don't want that to be the way that I navigate through life. And the more moments of awareness I have like that, where I'm looking inward and finding the places that are not fully in integrity within myself and doing my work to sit with it and then bring myself into greater integrity with what I believe, what I speak, what I live. That's, that's the beauty of this space of time where we're all waiting. We're all in this pause together. And perhaps this pause is serving a huge value, a huge uh, potential for all of us. There are a couple other little nuggets I just want to touch on. There was a great video that I watched by Russell Brand, and what I loved about it is it's on his channel. You can find it. He speaks very quickly, (laughs) and he's very intelligent, and so it takes a minute for me to fully grasp what he's saying. But he was, he was describing how he doesn't vote really. He's not voting because he's not American, but he doesn't really have a preference for either party because he sees something greater that is possible that we haven't been able to access yet. And the way he describes that, I completely resonated with that. We are moving towards something that hasn't been written yet, something that hasn't been fully formed yet and the old structures are crumbling underneath in order for us to open up the pathway for something new and so it can be really scary when that crumbling happens when we vote one way and we don't get what we want both parties have experienced that in the past four years democrats were crushed last year when the four years ago when the republicans won republicans are going to feel crushed this year if the democrats win like it looks like it will neither one fully gets what they want perhaps but at a collective level we've all agreed to these shifts and these dynamics so that perhaps something new can be born birthed through us when when I talk to this new generation, those who are just voting and just about to vote, they're, this is a general statement, so I won't make it too general. Many are disgusted by what they are witnessing. Can we, as the ones in authority positions, the ones who are voting, the ones who are guiding the collective agreement forward, can we focus on something that we can gift to the generations after us that is visionary from here moving forward into a new possibility? Just like hundreds of years ago, those visionaries saw something, something that they didn't know existed yet, but they moved us towards it. Can we bring something new forward for those coming after us? Of course we can. But things have to shift and change and crumble and, and be brought forward in order for that evolution. So Russell Brand was the one. What was the other one I was just thinking about? Oh, I can't remember it. I guess it must not have been relevant. I'll see if it pops forward. Okay, there's a song. (laughs) That's what I was going to start with, but (laughs) apparently that was not the way we were going to flow today. Oh, (laughs) and the song is apparently. (laughs) That's very funny. I love when my soul's like, you're totally in alignment. Just let it flow. (laughs) This morning when I went out for my run in the 40 degree weather that I had layers on this afternoon, I'll probably have flip flops and a (laughs) t-shirt because that's where we are in this current world, I hit shuffle on my phone 
on my Spotify account, and this song started to play immediately. It was the first song, and I've always loved it since I heard about it from my friend. But when I heard the words today, I heard them differently. And so as I sit in this pause of, we don't really know yet what's going to happen. We have a sense of it, but it's not quite clear yet. And the title of the song is Apparently, it's by Random Rab. And when I looked up the definition of apparently, it, it said to start to be seen, to be becoming visible, um, to become apparent. And what that feels like to me is like the veil sliding just ever so slightly to the side so we can see just a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more after that. And then at some point, it's all going to be apparent. We will see all of it. That's what's happening right now as we all move through this shift in the governmental structure of the United States of America and the leader of that foundation, of that process. Things are moving. And so here's the words. Um, I'll put the link to the song in the description. It has such a beautiful rhythm and beat. I encourage you to listen to it when you get a moment. So apparently by Random Rab. The fate to lose and forge ahead through the burden, through the death. The howling and humble hearts know the answers find the rest. Apparently a crystal sea winds into my hands, but when I breathe, all I see melts into the sand. So I'll be letting go now. And then the chant just begins, I'll be letting go now. And at some point it almost sounds to me like he's saying, are we letting go now? Are we letting go now? Are we letting go now? It's the song of surrender and trust that it's going to become apparent. And we're not there yet, but it's unfolding. And so can we lean back and trust in the process and know that it's taking us somewhere beautiful? Yeah. My mind has gone blank. That's all I have to share in this moment. I, I am grateful. Uh, it's not even deep enough. I feel incredibly blessed to live in a country where my voice can be heard with all of the other millions of voices. And... I honor this process that we are moving through. I will continue to hold space and send energy for a peaceful transition of power, just as I know many, many, many others are. And I will keep breathing through this time. I invite you to do the same. Next week on Wednesday, my friend Alicia Mathewson and I are hosting a day of Uh, deep contemplation and meditation, a chakra activation on 11.11. So if that resonates, you can find that under events on my website. It might feel really good to be in that space and breathe with us and focus on your own individual healing so that what we continue to contribute to the collective is the best, the best of ourselves, the highest possibilities that we came here to contribute. And all of that elevates where the collective movement takes us. So, blessings to all of our leaders. Blessings and gratitude to all who voted and claimed that their voice counts. Like, wow. (laughs) What high numbers. What strength in the masses. It's just so good so good. All right, I send you off into your weekend with so much love. Have a beautiful day, everybody.
Thank you for tuning in to this vibration of pure love. I invite you to join me on Sunday mornings for an hour of meditation, visualization, and energy healing, where we realign our mind-body-spirit with Gaia and Source. You can learn more at mysouljourney.com. Let's take this message of Gaia's love out into all of our relationships and communities today. So much love from my heart to yours.